Hello, in this video we're going to start discussing rates of change, both average rates of change and instantaneous rates of change. The concept of a derivative uh, is a way to express the instantaneous rate of change of a function. So it's important that we start um, talking about this concept. Uh, to start with, I want to just use an analogy. Um, sometimes the concepts of an average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change are confused. So consider the analogy where you're driving down the turnpike and after two hours you have driven uh, 140 miles. Now, uh, the for average rate of change, uh, average rate of change, all you do is you take your your end position minus your start position over your end time minus your start time and uh, so if you drove if you ended at the 140 mile marker and you started at the zero mile marker and you ended with two hours on the clock and you, uh, and, and you started with zero hours on the clock, that is simply 140 over two miles per hour or 70 miles per hour. A very simple concept, something that you probably learned in, in when you were really young. Um, so everybody's pretty familiar with the rate of change and the average rate of change since. Uh, the instantaneous rate of change is a more interesting concept. Um, with an instantaneous rate of change, uh, we are more interested in how fast you're going at a single moment in time, a single instant in time. And just that concept is problematic because uh, with an average rate of change, we basically take the end point minus the start point. Uh, the average rate of change uh, requires an interval. Uh, and if we want to deal with an instantaneous rate of change, just by nature, the instantaneous rate of change in a point only involves one, uh, a single point only does not have an interval. It, uh, one point does not make an interval. It takes two points to have an interval. So already, uh, with the concept of an instantaneous rate of change, we're in trouble. So that's where the concept of a derivative uh, swoops in and, and really helps us out. So I want to just kind of talk about that conceptually, and uh, then we will uh, just kind of develop the concept of a derivative from scratch and later do some practice problems. Um, so just from the conceptual standpoint, continuing with our analogy of driving down the highway, here I drove uh, 140 miles in two hours for an average uh, rate of 70 miles per hour. Uh, suppose as you're driving down the highway, um, a uh, uh, highway patrolman pulls you over and says, uh, I, sir, I just found on my radar gun you're going 85 miles an hour. Uh, and um, so a defense of, of, with this, of this calculation would not get you off the hook. Uh, if you said, officer, uh, so, you know, sorry, you must be wrong. I just have traveled 140 miles in two hours, so uh, I was not going 85 miles an hour. Obviously, that's, that's ludicrous. Um, my point is that your instantaneous rate of change can sometimes be much different from your average rate of change, um, and that's why the instantaneous rate of change is so interesting. Uh, lots of times, you know, calculus is is a study of one point at a time. What's happening at the three second mark, the nine second mark? What happens when you're exactly at the 21.2 second mark? All those different instants in time can be different. When you talk about average rate of change, you lose that, uh, that uh, study of what's happening at each individual point. Um, so if we look at kind of a generic graph first, Let's just do a, a parabola, keep it simple. I'm just going to call this f of x equals x squared, just a simple parabola. Um, the, uh, 
the instantaneous rate of change uh, is a, the slope of a tangent line that touches the curve. Say this is at 2. So uh, the, uh, I'm just going to write instantaneous rate of change is the slope of a tangent line. at a given x value on the graph. So with this blue tangent line, a tangent line is a, is a, is a line that comes and touches a curve at one specific point. So that, that straight line comes and touches my parabola right at 2. And whatever the slope of that line is, represents the instantaneous rate of change at that point. Um, for average rate of change, uh, if you took, say, a, uh, uh, if you went from an interval of like, say, negative 2 to 1, what you would do is you'd take a point at x is 1, a point at negative 2, and you would draw a secant line between those. And uh, the average rate of change is the slope of a secant line um, over a given interval on function f of x. So if I said uh, folks, tell me the average rate of change between uh, x is negative 2 and 1, say here, negative 2, comma 1. Uh, all you do is you find the slope of that secant line. A secant line is one where you start at one point on a curve, travel to another point on the same curve, and draw a line there. The slope of that line is, is my, my average rate of change. So that's just a, a very conceptual sense of um, how you define instantaneous rate of change and average rate of change on a graph. Um, so just one last time here before we go and do some algebra, I want to just point out that um, this involves two points, and we find the slope between two points, and this instantaneous rate of change involves only one point. That is a, a major difference between the two, and uh, so, so keep that in mind. I'm going to take this page off. We're going to do some some uh, some algebra now, and actually find the instantaneous rate of change at a point. So uh, I'm going to write down a formula, and then we're going to derive that formula from a graph. Um, so when we talk about a derivative, we use this f prime notation. F prime represents a formula that you can put an x into, and no matter what x you put in from that function, the derivative formula will spit out a number which represents the slope of the curve at that particular x value. So let me write down this. Um, this is called the definition of a derivative. And uh, at first glance, it probably won't mean a lot to you, but I'm just going to leave it at the top of a page of the page and for you to look at and then we'll kind of come back and revisit it. I'm going to call this the definition of a derivative. And now we're going to drop a, a, a little line uh, or a graph with a, with a curve. Another parabola. I'm not going to name what this one is. We'll just call it f of x. Um, it doesn't matter 
what what the actual name of this curve is uh, or what, what function it is. Um, so I'm going to define an X spot. We'll just go right here. Call that X. And I want to know the slope of the tangent line at that curve. And uh, uh, we have a big problem here. Just as I said earlier, uh, a slope requires uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It requires two different points. And currently, we just have one point. So I'm going to draw this tangent line, and uh, we will kind of study it. So there's my tangent line. Um, and uh, so one option for approximating this slope is to uh, uh, you know, with slope, we got to have two points. Uh, one option is to just look at a different line that kind of seems somewhat the same and use that instead. So I'm going to start there and consider maybe this point over here and draw a secant line between those two points. And just kind of look at those for a moment and just think about if that's a good idea. Um, does the blue line and this little black secant line, do they have the same slope? Um, they Kind of, uh, you know, a little bit. Um, the approximation is not that good. Um, so, uh, but, but I feel like we're on the right track. Uh, they're not wildly different. Uh, but they're certainly not the same. Um, so think about kind of how you can um, make a better approximation. Uh, I'm going to just go down, draw this again, and we're going to we're going to try and think of a a better way to approximate this uh, tangent line. Uh, I'll draw my point again there. This will be x. And uh, here's my tangent line. So last time, and this kind of curved up. Last time we picked a, we picked a point pretty far away. This time I'm going to pick a point that's a lot closer. And we're going to draw my little uh, secant line right there. And you can see that the slope of that little secant line is a, oops, there we go. Is a better approximation of the tangent line than than what we started with above. Um, so I'm going to now draw another graph. We're going to kind of go all in on this. And what I want to propose is that the shorter the secant line is, the better the approximation is of uh, of my tangent line slope. And if we make the secant line uh, if we make the second point infinitely close to the first point, uh, we get a result where my secant line uh, slope is infinitely close to the tangent line slope. And we're going to end up using a limit here to, to um, deal with the concept of infinitely close. Um, so let me tear this page off. We're going to draw this one more time, and we're going to do it for real. I'm going to write my... my um, draw my, my picture again. Uh, and I will draw a tangent line one more time. And we'll call this x. This is function f of x. Um, and uh, I'm going to pick a point right here. And it's going to be a point on a curve uh, right there. And this distance, we're going to call h. Sometimes it's called delta x, but often it's called h. So this point is going to be the point x plus h. 
we need to figure out the y coordinates of these two points. Uh, if I go up to this x value and over to the, the y axis, this is an unknown point we're going to call f of x. And then if this x plus h is put into the, the function, this is another unknown point. It's function f evaluated at x plus h. So for the slope of this little secant line, uh, I'm going to say slope of secant line. It's uh, you know, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. As you recall, that's slope. I'm going to write it as m. That's my slope. Um, so slope of the secant line is going to be uh, y2 minus y1. That's this minus this. And then x2 minus x1 is going to be x plus h, uh, sorry, minus x. And uh, that comes out to be f of x plus h minus x. Then the x minus x cancels out, so we just have h down below. So this is the slope of that secant line. I'm losing off the page here. Um, so the only thing that's left now is to make h really small. Notice h cannot be zero because that would be undefined in the bottom of the of the this this uh, fraction. And if h were zero, my my trick here to have two different points wouldn't make any sense because if h were zero, this would now we're back to one single point again. So h cannot be zero. But we want, h, we want h to be infinitely small. So we're going to say, let's take this curve and let h go to 0. Uh, this, this slope here, let h go to, to 0 with a limit. So we're going to have the limit as, of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And we're going to call this the derivative of f. With This, this little prime means derivative. Um, this is a derivative formula now that if you put in function f here, here, put in x plus h and yada, yada, evaluate the limit, it'll yield a formula and as a function of x that you can use to find the slope of this line right here. Uh, and it can be done at this x, at this x, at this x, any x you want. So this is a derivation of the, the definition of a derivative. And... Uh, in subsequent videos, we will practice using it.